the outgone Honorable Minister, Senator Hadi Sirika, himself a two-term former member of the National Assembly, who had chosen to treat us on this side of the divide with utmost disdain in the discharge of our duties, we want to state the obvious, that the committee was not carried along in virtually every ramification, despite the degree of respect the members accorded to the ministry any time they were invited for meetings. We were so badly treated with official information that will help us to do our official assignment. A few of the grouses, which are not personal, that we have against the ministry are thus. The Nigeria Air Project. The issue was shrouded in secrecy to the extent that it was fraudulently displayed as a new national carrier, contrary to the extant court order and international rules that strictly guided airline operations. This indeed was an embarrassment to the committee. Next is the inability to broker peace between the federal government and the Aviation Workers Union, which led to intermittent warning strikes by the unions and the ultimate disruption of economic activities in the industry, despite the intervention of the aviation committees of the National Assembly. The other issue that the committee was displeased with is the continuous threat of outright demolition of some of the aviation agency's headquarters in Lagos without making reasonable provisions for befitting regional offices in Lagos being the aviation hub. The current issue on airlines trapped stroke blocked funds in Nigeria to the tune of $800 million, which has resulted in expensive airfares in Nigeria because airlines sell tickets cheap to neighboring countries like Ghana, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, etc., where Nigerian passengers are compelled to go for cheaper air tickets to connect their flights. The issue of the sensational um, um, procurement of um, firefighting equipment, which was not to the knowledge of the committee. The non-transparent manner in which the Nigeria Air Project was awarded to Ethiopian Airlines at the detriment of Airlines Operators of Nigeria, AON, which has given way to surrendering our sovereign wealth to foreigners as claimed by the airline operators in Nigeria in one of their petitions to the committee. And of course, the, horridly, the horrid appointment of board members of the agencies at the tail end of the past administration. The list is endless. The meeting of today is convened so that the committee can listen to our invited guests as we want the right things to be done and we want the 10th National Assembly to take over from wherever we stop and for us to at least establish a template to address issues that are at stake. Why will you, for whatever reason, having an interim MD be in a hurry to unveil a national career on the last day of your administration? Why? The credit will still be, everybody knows that Rome wasn't built in a day, and there is no how you can put an airline, you know, in a day. Why the hurry? What is the issue? The aircraft that came in and left was a legitimate charter flight. Any one of us here, if we have a, if we have a destination wedding in Senegal, we can charter an aircraft. You don't need to have a license to do that. You just charter an aircraft. And the aircraft, you pay for it, it'll be brought here, take your passengers, and off you go. And that is what we did. But in this case, it was to unveil, you see, ever since 2018, all you'd ever seen about Nigeria Air aircraft were pictures, drawings, not the real aircraft. And we felt it was time to show what the real aircraft would look like, and also 
to let shareholders, to let shareholders, you see, we have institutional investors. They're not in aviation, but they're putting their money in here for, say, 10, 15 years and to exit maybe at a premium. So they need to see what the actual aircraft will look like. So we brought it in here to show them what the aircraft will look like. Then the social media dimension came into it. You are aware there are petitions, like you rightly said, and we have a duty to present those issues before you. So I think it's for you to just respond. It's not a fluke. It's real. The Nigeria Air Project is real. And we are doing that because most Nigerians know 85% of the flights are delayed. As of 2022, 85, more than 85% are delayed. The second thing we also know is that these flights are delayed because of low capacity. Most of the aircrafts we have, most of the airlines we have in Nigeria don't have the requisite capacity to deliver quality service. So we must have a national carrier that should be able to do that. Again, having a national carrier will also help us even in the issue of trapped funds. Because we are looking at domestic, regional, and international flights. And why we are having so much travel funds is because people come here and give us service. They can repatriate their dollars or their funds. But we are not reciprocating. So there is imbalance of trade. And the only way we can do that is if we have this national carrier. Again, the process of national carrier is defined in our laws. We couldn't have gone ahead without following the laws. And that's why it took time from 2021 when the process started and we are still on it before the court process said we should stop negotiations until the vacation of the court case and which we are obeying. However, the um, interim chair, interim um, MD of the um, Nigerian Air is here. He will throw more light on that. Again, the issue of the unions. When I took over as permanent secretary of aviation, I did call the unions to a meeting and we discussed they shouldn't have gone on that strike. It was improper, and they shouldn't. What were their issues? Demolition. Yes, there were certain buildings that were meant to be demolished. That's an executive decision. And we agreed. If these buildings are not OK, they have to go. And in going, the work of every employer is to provide an alternative accommodation for the workers. And we had agreed that that has to be done before the demolition can take place. So going to suffer Nigerians because of something pertaining to the workplace was uncalled for. They talked about consequential adjustment. I did promise them that government was working on it. And they went on strike. The next week, the consequential adjustment was done. So they were suffering the people for nothing. What they told me is that they believe by making noise, that's the only way government can listen to them. And I keep on telling them that that is wrong. You don't do unionism like that. You do social dialogue, you engage before you can even go to disrupt <coughs> services. So Ma, in terms of the union, we've been talking with them and we say what they did was not right. And I still stand by that up till now. Now, with the issue of airline travel funds, is the economy. If we are not generating, it's actually very hard. With the national carrier, if it comes to be, it's going to balance the trade and we won't be having this. But again, we are doing our work because we can only um, write to central bank, let them see how they can make amends and be able to pay this. And let me also put it on notice that before this current administration, before the last administration came into being, there were issues of trapped funds, which they paid in the first few months of the administration. And they put something in place to ensure that this does not accumulate. But the economy caused problems. We had COVID. And we are, every economy is trying to come up after the COVID. Again, the fire trucks. I'm surprised we are saying that the fire trucks was done without anybody knowing. All contracts agree, all contracts go through a particular process. There must be BPP, Bureau for Public uh, Procurement, um, no objection. It went to Federal Executive Council. It was approved, and the process of executing the contract was taken into consideration. Again, it was actually a contract that deals with an offshore service, where you need to open a letter of credit, and the contract is made up of three components. One is the fire truck itself. The other one is training on the use of those fire trucks. And the third one is the spare parts. And these things were followed 
accordingly. And if you look at the contract agreement, there were things that were supposed to be done. So it's not as if people didn't know about it. What people were complaining of, they said the price was too much. But then these are people who don't know about the, um, the details of the contract. It's a customized fire truck, fire and rescue truck, not only fire truck. And that was what we saw. But as we go ahead, people will be able to um, provide more clarification on that. As regards board appointments, as a civil servant, what I have to say is the board appointments were approved by Mr. President. And for us, that's a directive, and we have to do that accordingly. Our concern is that up to yesterday, some of us are keen enough to listen to radios. We hear what Nigerians say, and the cumulative effect of what is being said is to say that the entire process of the Nigerian air cannot be said to have been uh, rightly done. This, this is the position. We, you, they are, you know, we know. And this is the last part of our assignment. We cannot just afford to be working on the street while people continue to accuse us of even being uh, uh, complicit about uh, 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 what is happening in the aviation industry. Even this morning, this morning, as uh, I woke up, I saw a write-up about Air Nigeria. And the question is, do we really need these controversies? We don't need. Do we really need Nigerian Air? Yes, we do. If the allegation that the whole process has been transparent enough, Nigeria being what it is, we will still have gone into some sort of controversy. But it may not be as, permit me to use the word, as huge as it appears to be. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, 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 in my little knowledge about, uh, uh, I'm so sorry about some of the observations of our conduct as Nigerian citizens. I have always referred to the case of Onagura versus the state. And of course, the observation of late Justice Nikki Tobi, where he said the Nigerian polity, more than anyone known to me, is one of suspicion and suspect. It is one society where the slightest aberrant conduct of an individual, no matter how malefied, is read with so much suspicion. He says suspicion is the hobby of an average Nigerian. He does not only vegetate on it, he enjoys it more especially where the end result is to damage the character of another person. Those of you in that, on that side in the industry and those of us here have been sufficiently bashed about this matter. And we believe that if some caution, some care had been taken by you on that side and taking us along, some of the explanations that you will be doing, we will have been doing that on your behalf. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know Captain Olumudi. I know his character. I know him very well. In this industry, there is no how anybody can say that this gentleman will get involved in what is fraudulent. Not because he is here. But we all cannot claim not to know that there have been huge concerns about the process and the end result. And the issue is, this morning, I was with chairman when one of our colleagues came here and said that we said we have manufactured aircraft. But that's not what is in the team. <laughs> So we too don't feel uh, comfortable. And that's why we said, okay, fine. If there is any explanation, for God's sake, that can take us out of this controversy, Nigerians deserve to know, and rightly so. And that dictates the essence of this meeting. We are all uh, uh, civilized enough to understand that it is biblical that even though God knew that Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, he didn't condemn them. He started by saying, wherefore did you do so? So that's why we are saying, tell us, do we really need this controversy? What generated it? What can we do, you know, to go out? Because we want to be on course. I will be the happiest person if by Monday, I will be uh, on board Nigerian Air uh, to London or, or to Senegal or somewhere, <laughs> or to US. Tanzania. You know, anywhere. I will proudly come down and say that uh, this is my airline. My country's airline, sorry. Share capital that you people keep talking about. How much of it is authorized? The share capital that you have got 
you know, amongst ourselves, and how much of it has been called off, and who has paid. Mm -hmm. Then what are the services required from the partners? And the At cost of the aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. So all this has to be spelled yeah. out. We can go yes. in peace. Mm.